Last month's unprecedented flooding in Mississippi took out a water plant and left the town of Jackson with no running water for weeks. And as it unfolded, the water crisis exposed a number of failures by the city and the state. But our CBS News investigation focuses on one big decision made by Jackson a decade ago that was supposed to help prevent a situation just like this. RJ Maxerod is covering the story and he joins us on set to talk about it. Jim, good morning. Good morning. Now imagine it's 2022 and a state capital city in America had no running water at all. Not for an hour, not for an overnight, but for nearly a week. That is what Jackson, Mississippi faced last month, leaving the city's most vulnerable desperate. Our facility had absolutely no water. We were at zero water pressure. Sydney Howard manages the Hope Lodge in Jackson, where the American Cancer Society puts up patients at no cost while they're being treated. When I walked in here to see that that gauge was at a zero, it's what do you do? Last month, when the city's water system failed, Howard had to scramble to evacuate 11 cancer patients to facilities where the taps and toilets yes, actually worked. Did you have 30 seconds to think, what is going on in Jackson, Mississippi, where the Hope Lodge doesn't have water? Yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm here to take care of lives and save lives. At the end of August, floods drowned Jackson's aging water treatment plant, crippling the system across the city. Faucets ran with colors you never want to see. And the people of Jackson rushed frantically to find whatever was fresh enough to drink. We do not have reliable running water at scale. It was exactly the kind of crisis the city hoped to avert a decade earlier when it made a deal with the Siemens Corporation. It was ridiculous to even support. DeKeither Stamps was elected to the Jackson City Council the same year the city signed the contract with Siemens, which he opposed. What went wrong? Everything. Everything went wrong. Siemens came to Jackson with a promise to upgrade the city's water system. The upgrades would generate enough revenue, they said, to make Jackson's water system sustainable for years to come. All the commercial meters are in stock with the city. Other cities typically paid for projects like this with a cut of the money saved on the back end. But Jackson agreed to pay the full cost for those promises up front. The city took out a loan for $90 million. Did Siemens keep those promises? No. The biggest piece of the plan, replacing water meters across the city, was also the source of the biggest problem. Thousands of the new meters didn't work. Some meters measuring in gallons when they were supposed to be measuring in cubic feet. Meaning people in Jackson were being charged as much as seven and a half times what they should have been throw in computer systems that didn't operate as promised. The bill was more than $11,000. And people in this largely African-American city with a per capita income of $22,000 were suddenly facing water bills they had no hope of paying. It's a done deal now. And we the one got the better cost. The city sued Siemens and some subcontractors, alleging in part a massive fraud orchestrated by Siemens that caused more than $450 million in losses to Jackson. Promise made, promise kept. The mayor claimed victory when Siemens and the subcontractors settled, even though they did not admit wrongdoing. Siemens essentially paid back the $90 million. The company sent us a short statement saying the agreement settled the issue and the project did not end as either party hoped. Is it fair to assume that made the city whole? Oh, no. Even that was a sham job. After the law firm took a $30 million cut and tens of millions more went to pay back loans needed to keep the water running, the city did not have nearly enough to fund the much-needed repairs. According to this city audit, Jackson will be paying back millions on the Siemens deal at 6% interest until the year 2040. Sad. Sometimes I got to laugh to keep them crying. There are just lots of problems in the city of Jackson. Michael Regan runs the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in Washington. As it relates to Siemens and the water meters and the billing, we understand that that's a part of the problem. Regan has traveled twice to Jackson in the last month as he focuses on cities where he says chronic underinvestment 
has led to infrastructure problems. How many other Jacksons exist in our country right now? Dozens, uh, if not more. When you look at the data, black and brown communities and low-income communities have been disproportionately impacted by environmental hazard and harm because of a lack of investment. In what qualifies as a bit of good news these days, Jackson, Mississippi's water is back up and running again for now. So, Jim, this is a remarkable story. Uh, the entire city was without running water. Uh, what did the people in Jackson, Mississippi, tell you about how they live their lives? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can imagine, right? I mean, this is something that I think is easily relatable for all of us. Can you imagine going to your tap no. and either nothing comes out or water that you can't drink comes not, out? Or you you, absolutely you, not. We're New Yorkers, you know, and you live in Jersey. When, when the water company says, hey, we're shutting the water off from 9 to 5, people freak out and make all nine sorts of plans. Five. Right, yeah. nine to yeah. five, we freak out. There is an estimate about what it would take to fix Jackson's entire water system right now. Try a billion dollars. Wow. Um, so you mentioned in your story that you're just like, actually, you looked at one component of the problem, the contract with Siemens. Why right. did you just look at that? And how many other components are there? Well, you have to understand something about that contract. So. Normally, these performance contracts, and we talked about it a little bit, but it bears repeating. These performance contracts are, hey, we implement some changes, in this case, the water meters. Theoretically, that generates enough revenue to fund things like repairs. Sounds good in theory. Problem is, a lot of cities, they pay for that on the back end, and, and the company gets a cut on the back end of money saved. Right. Mm. In this case, Siemens wanted it up front. And then when you have a problem, what recourse is there? You've already, it's like, we all know when you got a contractor working at your house, you don't give him all the money right away because <laughs> right. he's going to destroy your kitchen and then take off, right? right? You you, it's half the job up is front, done. and then when it's, yeah, exactly. So that's the problem. Now the question is, hang on, did this take place in other municipalities, mm. in other cities? So we're not done reporting. So you uh, interviewed the head of the EPA. Uh, mm -hmm. He acknowledged the problem. He's visited Jackson and other places, uh, communities, uh, low-income communities, black and brown communities. The question is, what's he doing about it? Well, last time in Jackson, he took the DOJ with him because he said, no handshake agreements. I want some teeth in whatever we decide. Among the things that has not been ruled out is a federal takeover mm -hmm. of the Jackson water system. So wow. as we say, this is not the last we will hear about this story. Well, we look forward to the rest of your reporting. Right. Jim, always great having you here. Great, thanks, thanks. for having me.